Let's look at an example. Here we have the, uh, the function just simply sine x going from 0 to pi. We want to revolve about the x-axis, right? So if we're going about the x-axis, again, we kind of have to think about for a given x value, right? Here's x. The radius of one of these circles that we're revolving, right? The radius is going to be f of x, or if you like, y, okay? And so for revolving about the x-axis, we're in this situation here, right? So the arc length formula, or sorry, the surface area formula, says we should do the integral from 0 to pi, 2 pi f of x times the arc length element, right? So 1 plus f prime of x squared times dx, right? Um, now, one of the things that you might, you can, you can sort of actually generalize both of these. This may be worth pointing out um, that in, in both cases here, or really in, in all cases, we can write the surface area as an integral. Well, limits are going to depend on which variable you use, but we can do something like 2 pi r times ds, right? Where ds is this arc length element. It could be expressed either this way or that way, depending on which variable of integration you want to use. And the radius, well, that's going to be, you know, if we're revolving about the x-axis, the radius is given by either f of x or y, depending, again, on which variable you want to use. For the y-axis, we choose either x or f inverse. OK, so here's our formula. We just have to plug things in. Let's see what this looks like. 0, pi. So we have 2 pi. So f of x is sine of x. Okay. Under the square root, we have 1 plus. So we take the derivative, right? We take f prime. The derivative of sine is cosine. 1 plus cos squared x times dx, right? Um, now, in some ways, surface area integrals, despite the more complicated looking formula, they're almost sometimes easier to evaluate than arc length integrals because you have an extra bit out front that lets you do a u substitution like is the case here, right? There's a u-substitution we might want to try. The obvious one is probably going to be doing cosine. We could do cosine. Derivative of cos gives us sine. That seems like a good thing to try, right? Let's give it a shot, see what happens. So we let, uh, we let u equal to cos x, OK? du will be minus sine x dx u at 0 is 1, u at pi is minus 1, okay? So we make that change of variables. We get, let's bring that 2 pi and the minus 1 out, this minus sign here out front. Now, uh, the integrals go from 1 to minus 1, right? Um, Maybe we want the minus 1 on the bottom. We can flip the limits. Well, that actually flipping the limits gets rid of this minus sign out front, right? So we can make that into a minus, make that into a plus, make that into a plus. OK. So the sine x dx becomes our du. And we get to the square root of 1 plus u squared. Integrate with respect to u. Ha. We're not done, right? We're not done with, uh, you know, that's still not something that we can immediately evaluate. So we have to think about how do you how do you deal with that? Well, looks like a trig substitution, right? Looks like a tangent substitution. So now we, we substitute again. This time we're going to let u equal to tan theta. OK. And du will be secant squared theta times d theta. Maybe you see where this is heading and you're not liking it. Let's go for it anyway. Um, u squared plus 1 becomes tan squared theta plus 1. That's secant squared theta, so the square root is going to be secant. And oh, yeah, so now maybe we're, <laughs> we're not so happy. What we get? 2 pi. Got to change the limits. Um, 
minus 1 to 1 becomes minus pi over 4 to pi over 4, right? 10 of pi over 4 is 1. 10 of minus pi over 4 gives me minus 1. Um, that becomes secant. That becomes secant. Aha. Secant cubed theta d theta. Everyone's favorite trigonometric integral, right? Um, but we've done it. We've done it. We know, we know what the answer should be. We, let's do, you know what, in fact, we can write this down. Uh, it's going to be 2 pi times. Uh, so secant cubed evaluates to 1 half secant x tan x plus 1 half times the natural log of secant x plus tan x. Okay. And because we took the time to change our limits of integration, we don't have to worry about substituting back, right? Oh, and I guess, sorry, not x theta. Not that it really matters, right? We're plugging in the number. Um, so you, you plug in the numbers and, and, and you've got it. Do we want to do it? Um, maybe, you know what, maybe it's not so bad. Uh, the twos cancel with the one half. There's still that pi out front. Um, and actually, let's see. Um, for this one here, Oh yeah, it's going to work out, right? Okay, so secant of pi over 4 is root 2, tan of pi over 4 is 1. So that's going to give me a root 2. Uh, minus pi over 4 is going to give me minus root 2, minus minus. So there's actually a, I get a 2 root 2 from that part. Coming over to here, uh, root 2 plus 1 for the positive 1. And then it's going to be minus root 2, minus 1 for the other one, but the absolute value is going to eat those minus signs. Um, those cancel, right? Those actually cancel. So I think we just actually get 2 root 2 times pi for our answer. 